Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over how to um, compile and submit an inventory feed. An inventory feed is used to uh, list products for sale. Um, it's also used in the management of your of your pricing, your your quantity, your shipping rates, shipping lead times, and it also allows you to open or close listings. Um, and I'll go into more detail about that uh, a little later. So you're going to want to log into your seller tools and click on upload an inventory feed. Uh, near the bottom of the page, you'll see this um, hyperlink that says Marketplace New SKU Feed Templates. Click on that, and it will have both links you want right next to each other. First, download the inventory feed template to, uh, I recommend a desktop since it's easy to find. And you're also going to want to open the inventory feed specifications. Let's go ahead and find the inventory feed. Make sure it's big, good. And I'm going to go over what each column is and what needs to go uh, in each column. Um, the first column is a listing ID. Uh, the listing ID is a number assigned by Rakuten.com Shopping to your uploaded listings. Uh, it's only created um, the first time you list an item. And you can leave it blank. Um, the only time you'd need to uh, have your listing ID in that field is to change your reference ID. Um, and if you need to change your reference ID, I have a video on how to go over that. But you only need a listing ID if you're going to change the product's reference ID. The next column is the product ID. Uh, now there are many different types of a, of a product ID. Um, first one being Rakuten.com shopping SKU, uh, ISBN, which um, no one really uses anymore. Uh, two UPC or three merchant SKU or seller SKU. Now in this example I'm going to say I have this um, stainless steel uh, 12 inch round griddle and I'm going to list it with a UPC. So I'm going to put in the product ID field my UPC and if you notice um, sometimes if it shows up if the numbers don't show up properly you can either expand the field to see if that works. Um, if, it, if, it sh if you expand it and you still see the numbers are formatted incorrectly, that means you have to format the cells. I'm going to show you how to do that in case, um, in case it's happening for you. So you're going to highlight the entire column and just hit right click, format cells, and go down to custom and replace general with uh, 14 zeros. And this should reformat your your cell. So if you had um, it in, in correct format, it would fix it. The next field is the product ID type. You need to tell us what you're using, because our system won't recognize if you're using a seller SKU, a UPC, um, or or the Rakuten.com shopping SKU. Now you have to make sure you use the number that corresponds with the product ID type. So in my example, I'm using a UPC, so I'd want to put the number 2, because the number 2 means it's UPC. If I was using a my seller SKU, because I don't have UPCs for my products, and I just uploaded my new SKU feed, you would put your seller SKU in the product ID field and put your uh, 3 in the product ID type. The next field is item condition. Uh, same thing as the, the previous uh, previous column where you need to put the um, number associated with the item condition. So if you're listing a brand new item, you would have to put the number 1. If you put new, it would not work. And if you were selling refurbished, uh, you would do 10. Um, you can do uh, you know, 2, 3, 4, and 5, but um, those, aren't, those aren't used as often. And please note, if you are selling in computers or electronics, you can only use the item condition 1 or 10. So we'd only allow brand new or manufactured refurbished items. Uh, next field is simply price. This is going to, going to be the selling price on our website. I don't want this to sell in the time it's open, so let's price it way higher. So it's $100. I'm going to price mine for $120, but that's going to be the price that it sells on our marketplace. Next two columns relate to map. So if you have um, map agreements with your 
with a manufacturer and you can't sell below a certain price for the minimum minimum advertised price, you can specify that in this column. There are different map types and you can select one, two, or three to, uh, to, to use the type you'd like. I have an example of the type one, which is click for price, and that is right here. So you can see it doesn't tell you the price unless you click over here. Uh, most most merchants, you, you don't have to put anything here, but if you have them, you, you can. Quantity is simply how many of the product you have. I'll say I have 15. Uh, next column is offer expedited shipping. And again, this is one of those columns where you have to use the, num the number corresponding to the, your answer. Um, it's either one for yes, where you're offering it, or zero for no. So I will offer exp expedited shipping, so I will put a one in that field. Uh, description. Uh, this is not a product description. It's for things like new in box, manufacture refurbished, or you know opened new in box. It's it's more, it's for more for short sentences that um, apply to your product. It's not it's not a product ID or uh, the product description field. I mean, uh, the shipping rate standard. You may ask yourself, why am I doing my shipping rates if I've already made my account wide shipping rates? Answer is you don't have to if you want to use your account. Uh, your default account shipping rates. If you want to override those, this gives you the opportunity to do so. So if I offered free shipping um, or $5 shipping across all my products, but in, for this product I wanted to offer, um, I wanted to charge $10 shipping, this would override your uh, your default settings or your global settings. Uh, shipping rate expedited, so if you have expedited shipping, you need to tell us how much you are going to charge for that and I'm going to put 15. Shipping lead time, the standard shipping lead time um, for all marketplace orders is one to two business days. Um, however, if you are in the following categories, you can extend it up uh, by another seven days. So if you're in home and outdoor, sports, toys, and baby, um, you can extend it by an additional one to seven days, uh, but only if you're in those categories. I don't need to extend it, so I'm going to put, I'm not going to put anything there. The next few columns are all similar to the offer expedited shipping. So if you offer two-day shipping, you're going to want to put one for yes, zero for no, and you're going to want to give us the rate. Same for one, one-day shipping and the rate, and one-day shipping rate. Reference ID. Uh, this is very, 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 very important. Uh, when you get an order, this is the the number or the, the alphanumeric string we're going to give you. Uh, so whatever you need to know, so if you get an order, you need to you need to know what the what the reference ID means, so you need to know what to ship. Um, some people use their seller SKU, some people use UPC, uh, manufacturer part numbers, whatever you need to use to ship out the correct product, use that. In this example, I'll just use the manufacturer part number. Uh, but it's really up to you, so you know what you're going to ship. And that is it for the first product. If you wanted to list um, additional products in the same feed, you just do a new line per item. Um, that's it, so I'm going, to, I'm going to show you how to save this properly, and now I'm going to submit it and view my response file to see if it was successful. So let's go ahead and hit Save As, and you have to save it as the correct file type, which is the text tab uh, delimited here. If you do not save it as this file type, it will not uh, process. Okay, I'm saving it to my desktop so it's easy to find. I put a date on it so I can uh, track that. So once you want to upload it, you're going to want to go back into your seller tools, uh, home page, and click upload and inventory feed. Select file type, we're doing an inventory listing. Uh, we're going to browse, we're going to find that file we just saved. Oops, so I can type correctly. Open and you're going to want to hit upload file. It will give you the message that says your file was uploaded successfully. Now this does not mean it was processed successfully. Um, there's different things that can make your um, feed error. If you were to take away columns or take away this header, um, it, might make, it might cause the feed to error and you wouldn't know that unless you check your response file. So anytime you submit a feed, it's, a really, it's, it's essential you check the response file to make sure it, it functioned 
um, the way you expected it to. And if it didn't, uh, you need to you need to fix it so it it uh, it goes properly. So in order to check the response file, uh, you're going to want to click here on the bottom where it says click here to view your file upload results. Now it takes about 15 to 30 minutes for the response file to generate. Sometimes a, a little faster, but on average about 15 to 30 minutes. Um, in this example, if it's not there, it's fine. I can use another uh, another example because I have a lot of response files in mind. So let's click here. We just submitted an inventory feed, so we're going to click on the inventory feed archive, and we submitted it around what the 22nd round. Oh, there it is. Perfect. So there's two two files. The .txt is simply the inventory feed itself, and the .resp is the response file. Go ahead and click on the .resp file, and you'll get an option to open it or save it somewhere. You can hit open and open it in Notepad um, if you can choose, you know, choose program to open this, this file, find Notepad and do it. If that's not working, you can just save it to your desktop. Remember what the title is and simply go to Notepad and manually open the file. And it will give you the reference ID and a number one means it was successful, a zero means it was uh, it errored. And if you don't remember what uh, what what means what, you can open the uh, inventory feed specifications and here it'll say was successful. The zero means no, an error occurred. One means yes, it was successful. Um, and if you get an error, it'll tell you what line it erred on and what the error is. Um, and you can see what the error is and fix it and if you don't know how to fix it or what the error means please email us and we'll definitely help you um, in, in fixing it and that is it I am going to show you how to close listings with the inventory feed and it is very easy because it is it is exactly the same except for quantity you simply hit zero and when you submit an inventory feed with a quantity of zero, it will close that listing after it processes. And it's the same exact um, process of saving it to your desktop or wherever you're saving it to. Hit save, make sure it's text tab delimited, upload the file, check the response file, and make sure you, you actually close the listing. Um, it'll, it'll tell you if it was successful or not. And that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, please email your ECC or our Merchant Success Team. Um, I will have the Merchant Success Team email um, in the description below. I will also have the link to get to this page, which has the inventory feed specifications as well as the template. Um, thank you for watching, and please email us if you have any questions at all. Thank you.